In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how you can use your Surface Pro as a tablet. If you had a Surface Pro running Windows 10 or basically any Windows 10 device, you may have noticed there was a specific feature called Windows 10 Tablet Mode. This feature has been removed in Windows 11, but that doesn't mean the Surface Pro is still not an amazing Windows tablet. In this video, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks to help you use your Surface mainly as a tablet. Of course, show you some things that have improved in Windows 11 and just show you ways in general of how you can use your Surface Pro even better. Of course, if you do like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you want to supercharge away your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. With that being said, let's get into this. The first thing you most likely notice is that there is no longer a quick option to turn on tablet mode like there was in Windows 10. Now, all you have to do is turn the keyboard around and your taskbar, when it realizes the keyboard has disappeared, actually expands and becomes a lot easier and wider to touch. So your applications actually get that little bit bigger to make it easier to jump between applications. This is quite nice because I use, when I use my device as a tablet, just folding it around, not telling it to go into tablet mode, just makes the workflow that a little bit smoother and easier. But when you get rid of the keyboard, there are a few questions of like, how do you click and how do you right click? Because the tablet knows you've gone into tablet mode, a right click is simply pressing and holding with your finger for a couple of seconds that square populates around your finger, you let go, and then you get the right click context menu, which is also expanded and easy to touch with the finger because it, again, it knows you're using right click with the finger and not a mouse. If you wanted to double click on something, that's simply double clicking like you would on your keyboard. And if you want to do a single click or a tap and drag, again, just like on your mouse, when you press and hold, you can use your finger, press and hold on the screen, and you can highlight. So the gestures are quite similar. But what I'll take you through now is some other gestures when you're using tablet mode. If you swipe in from the right-hand side, this will pull up your notifications as well as show you your calendar. And then on the left-hand side, if you swipe in from the bezel, this is gonna pull up your widgets. I actually don't really use these widgets. I don't find them all that helpful. But if you do, the widgets are simply swiping in from the left your notifications and calendar on the right hand side. And make sure you just swipe in off the bezel onto the screen to action either of these. Down the bottom in your taskbar, there is actually the Wi-Fi volume and your battery icon, which is now a single control. If you tap on this, this actually opens up a range of quick settings for you that you can customize. I recommend getting rid of what you don't want here and putting the, only the important things here. But before we get onto that, down the bottom, you have your option for your brightness controls, which is really handy. And then of course, underneath that, your audio. If you have a different audio device like Bluetooth headphones or anything like that, right next to the audio where you can mute and unmute, you can actually tap on the little speaker icon and then you can choose which audio if you have multiple connected to your computer. In here, you have all these quick buttons like your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your battery, all that sort of stuff. If you wanna customize this section here, down the bottom next to the settings cog, there is a little pen. We're gonna tap on that. It's gonna turn us into the editing mode. So if there's something we didn't want on here, we could simply get rid of it by pressing the unpin button. Or if you wanna add something on, simply select on the add down the bottom. And then you can choose some of the quick settings that you want. I'm gonna put nearby sharing, actually airplane mode back in. If you press and hold, you can actually move these around so you can rearrange it to however it suits you best. I recommend putting the most commonly used things up the top and then everything else underneath that. Once you're happy with how you've customized this little setting, simply select on done, tap anywhere on the screen and you can get out of that menu. So again, we tap on here. There's a range of quick settings right here for you. When you wanna type with your keyboard, it's kind of hard when you don't have a physical keyboard with you. So I've also docked my keyboard down the bottom to simply select on a keyboard option here, and I can start typing and writing away. If you wanna customize this keyboard, you can select on the settings in the top left-hand corner, and then you can choose the layout, whether you want it default, small, split, or traditional. I like to keep it small and using the top bar to move it around. This is really like a phone keyboard and you can swipe and type with it. Um, and you know, you can keep it on one hand, one side so you can use your finger to control it. Uh, but if you don't have your keyboard always down here, we're gonna customize the taskbar to make sure your keyboard option is always there. So if we press and hold, so we're gonna do a right click on the taskbar, we're gonna go into our taskbar settings 
And then you can see this option here of touch keyboard, show touch key icon. I've got that set to always. So whenever I wanna access it, it's simply down there. And then of course you can have it to set to never, that will hide it always, or you can have it when no keyboard is attached. So again, in this mode, it will actually just automatically appear, but I like having it there always. One thing you may have noticed when I've gone into an application here is that the taskbar automatically hides for you. This is a really neat feature in Windows 11. If you wanna pull the taskbar back up, simply swipe up and there's all your programs go into an application and it's gonna minimize, giving you the most amount of screen real estate. But I'm gonna X out of this now and show you a few other features. A lot of people use their tablets to consume content like YouTube and documents and things like that. But sometimes you're gonna have two forms side by side. So I'm gonna open up a web browser and I'm gonna grab YouTube and then I'm gonna grab the top of it. And you can see here as soon as, I'm gonna push it to the top there and that's gonna be a full screen. But as soon as I grab it with my finger and start moving it around the screen, you get this little context menu that allows you to quickly do things like snap. And this is gonna let you put it anywhere on the screen in these pre-formatted options to easily go 50-50, two thirds, one third, a quarter, a quarter and half the screen. So I'll show you what this looks like with two programs open. I'm gonna move this to the side for now. Open up a sample PDF document and they're here just sort of on the screen. If I grab it and start moving it around, this little snapping menu pops up. I can put that on the left-hand side. Then it's gonna ask what do I want on the right-hand side, and I'll just put YouTube there. So it's really easy. They've made this a lot better in Windows 11 than it was in Windows 10. But of course, you can still use the gestures if you don't wanna use that bar, simply by grabbing the program you want, pushing it to the left-hand side of the screen, we'll snap it to the left-hand side, grab it again from the top bar to the right hand side, we'll snap it to the right hand side. And then of course, if you push it to the top, it'll go full screen. So there's a few easy ways of using your hand to navigate when you don't have a mouse with you. While I've got this PDF open, I'm actually gonna show you a few cool things with the Surface Pen as well. You'll notice that as soon as I undock the Surface Pen, I get this little context menu down the bottom for the most commonly used apps that I want. So I've got OneNote, Whiteboard, and the Snipping Tool, but I can edit this by selecting on the settings. Then I can just choose to go into the Edit Pen menu, and I can actually add or remove any other programs that I want. So I might use Word quite a bit with my pen. So whenever I dock or undock my pen, that little context menu will appear. Of course, if you just put the pen back, it doesn't actually pop up, but I'll give it a few seconds. And then I've got a really quick way of getting into my most commonly used programs, even when I don't have my keyboard around. And I've also got the snipping tool in here because taking a screenshot is probably one of the hardest things to do without a keyboard. So I'd recommend in your little context menu there, grab your pen, give it a few seconds, grab your pen, go into the settings menu, edit this menu, and then put the snipping tool in here as well. So that's a really handy way of just going snipping tool, and then this new dialog box opens up, and you can just create a new snip, grab that screenshot that you're after, and then you can go ahead and start annotating this up, all without needing to use your keyboard at all. Then you can go ahead and save it, copy it, share it, anything you want, but taking screenshots is still really easy. Just grab your pen and go ahead. The other way you can do it is actually customizing the back of the pen. So the back of the pen, when it's Bluetooth paired, has a few options that you can control. So if I press the back of my pen once, it'll launch me into my whiteboard, which will take a few seconds to open up that application. If I double tap, it will take me straight into OneNote. And if I press and hold, it can do something else again. And I've got this one to quickly take a note. I'm gonna go four finger swipe and I'll take you through the touch gestures in a second, but we're gonna learn how to customize those uh, back of the pen options. So we're simply gonna go into our pen down here in the little taskbar. We're gonna select on our pen, which is the same icon that popped up before, but this time we're gonna go into our settings and we're gonna go into our pen settings, which is gonna go into our settings on our PC. From here, I'm just gonna go into white theme or light theme, just because it's easier for you guys to see. You can see as soon as I press something, 
the keyboard is automatically gonna pop up. Let's go to that theme. Actually, I wanna just quickly type in light. Light theme settings. And I'm just gonna go light mode. I find that when I'm making videos, it is easier to keep it on light mode for people watching. Dark mode, better for my eyes, but does make it harder when you are watching on a video. So I'm gonna X out of this and start this again. I'm gonna go back into the pen settings, go on the settings option and pen settings one more time. This is gonna take us back into our pen settings. I'm not gonna go through all of these right now. I have a few videos on that that you can check out in my channel. But what I'm gonna do is select on this option here that choose what your uh, pen shortcut button does. I'm gonna drop that down and you can actually customize what the clicks on your pen do. I've got it set to single click whiteboard, double click one note and press and hold is a one note quick note. But maybe I wanted to use my single click to go straight into the screen snip. So now whenever I click the back of my pen once, it's gonna go straight into a screen snip so it's even faster for me to take a screenshot. So that is extremely handy. I can select on the snipping tool and then I can go ahead and start editing that up, put it to the top of the screen and look at that, we can start annotating and marking away back of the pen, use it as an eraser, whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna put the pen away for a second and I wanna teach you a few gestures that you can use with your fingers. Now I wanna teach you a few touch gestures to control the Windows 11 experience when you don't have a mouse input. If you wanna go straight to your desktop very quickly, a four finger swipe down on any program will minimize that program. And then of course, if you do a four finger swipe up on the screen, it'll bring that program back up. But it has been a little bit finicky today during this demo. Um, there you go. I don't know why normally it's really smooth, but today it's been a little bit finicky. And then of course, if we do a three or four finger swipe up again, it's gonna open up all the programs that we currently have. This makes it really easy to quickly jump between different programs. Then we can simply select on the program we want. Maybe we wanna go into our sample PDF document, and then you can quickly jump between different programs you have open. Three finger swipe up again. All those programs are there, but what you can also see is down the bottom, you have this thing called desktop one, desktop two, and new desktop. So you can have multiple virtual desktops in Windows, and I find this really nice to put different programs and different focuses on different desktops, but you can get to that by simply doing a three or four finger swipe up, or pressing this little black and white square next to the start menu, and this will let you open up multiple desktops. If you wanted to move a program from one desktop to another, simply open up with a three finger swipe up or pressing the black and white square and dragging a program onto that second desktop and there you go. If you wanted to swipe between your desktops, you can simply do a four finger swipe and that's gonna let you easily navigate between your multiple desktops. You can of course have uh, more than two multiple desktops. You can have pretty much as many as your computer is gonna hold. Um, but of course, I only recommend having two or three, but to move between them very easily, a four finger swipe is gonna let you just navigate between the two. And then of course, if you go four finger swipe down again, it takes you straight to your desktop if you needed something on here, like accessing a form. The last thing I'll show you in this video is of course how you can uh, rotate your screen. And all you have to do is select on that Wi-Fi volume and battery icon. And again, make sure that your rotation lock is not turned on. Or if you don't want it to rotate, turn it on. I'm gonna turn rotation lock on, simply turn my screen, then I have to lift it and it knows to rotate. And now we've gone from portrait to landscape. I'm gonna pull that down so you can still see the whole screen. And then I can open up something like a PDF document. And there I can now use my device to read this more like a regular piece of paper. You know, I'm gonna add a few more features in here for you guys, because I think it's quite cool. When you've got a PDF document, you can of course grab your pen, select on the pen here, and start marking up and annotating away. I find this one of the biggest benefits of having a Surface Pro with a pen is that I can use it to quickly annotate and mark up on documents. And that works extremely well in a program like OneNote. So I'm gonna open up OneNote very quickly. OneNote, because it knows we're already in a note-taking uh, portrait mode, it's actually just launched us with our ribbon hidden. I'm gonna minimize this very quickly. And of course, I have other videos on OneNote, but you can see here that I've got a PDF document that I was annotating. I'm just gonna go full screen on this. I'm gonna grab that pen, and then I can start continuing to mark up, annotate, highlight, whatever it is, 
but this becomes really easy. And of course, you can see that my device right now, I've got the kickstand open. I'm simply gonna close that flat, put it back down. The rotation lock, because we lifted it, had turned. So what I'll do is lift it up, put it back into this regular rotation that I want it to be in, select on my taskbar by, by pulling it up, and then turning on rotation lock. So then I can move my screen around and it's not actually going to turn out of that rotation, which means I can now walk around with my device, taking notes or anything like that. And there you have it. Those are small ways that you can use your Surface Pro as a tablet with Windows 11. Of course, if you guys did like this video, let me know by giving a thumbs up. And if you're in a supercharged way to your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.